Hey friends, Pastor Bill Walden here with Build Up the Church. This is a devotional word for July 22nd, 2024. This is out of the book of Acts, chapter 25. In Acts chapter 25, we see that Paul has been imprisoned in a Roman prison in Caesarea. He was initially taken into protective custody when he was visiting the temple area in Jerusalem. And the Jews there thought he was bringing the Gentiles into the temple area and that was a death sentence, according to Jewish law, not according to God's law, not according to Roman law, but the Jews were very insistent that no Gentile should enter the temple area, and so they believed that Paul had violated that. They tried to kill him. He was taken into protective custody. Long story short, he's transferred down to Caesarea along the Mediterranean coast. He's first under the... Uh, oversight or under the authority of Felix. But then uh, Felix was succeeded after two years by another Roman leader named Festus. And Festus is a more honorable man. He doesn't see anything wrong with what Paul has done. He doesn't understand why he has been accused of all of these religious things that he, that he has no knowledge of or very little knowledge of. And he's trying to please the Jews because he's a politician. He wants to keep peace with everybody. But Paul here has been given a, an offer. You could go back to Jerusalem and stand trial there. And we see Paul here picking up the story in Acts chapter 25, verse 9. It says, Festus, wanting to do the Jews a favor, answered Paul. And he said this, Are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and there be judged before me concerning these things? The Jews had another plot to try to assassinate Paul on the way to Jerusalem. We don't know if Festus was aware of that or not, but he was trying to court favor with the Jews while still trying to do the right thing according to Roman law. This is Paul's response. So Paul said, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat. In other words, I'm being tried by the empire of Rome. I stand at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged. To the Jews, I have done no wrong as you very well know. For if I am an offender or have committed anything deserving of death, I do not object to dying. But if there is nothing in these things of which men accuse me, no one can deliver to me, no one can deliver me to them. I appeal to Caesar. Paul was a Roman citizen, and so he had that right to appeal to Caesar. He was being judged by the courts of Rome, and he said, you know, I'm not going to put myself under the judgment of those religious rulers in Jerusalem who I know want to kill me. I'm not going to allow them to plead their story once again. We have been through this a couple of times already. They have no accusations against me. You know that there's nothing against me. And so I'm going to appeal to a higher court. I'm not going to give in to your suggestion, which is done to, to court them and to gain favor with them. I appeal to Caesar. So Paul here is standing up for his rights as a Roman citizen. He's a Christian and he's trusting Jesus with his life, but he's also in a healthy, legal, ethical way using the system to protect his own life. He's ready to die if it's God's will, but not if it's just simply the will of man and the anger and the revenge of man. And so he's walking according to the spirit and not giving in to the pressure of the uh, Jews that want to kill him. He's using his rights and he's using the system to preserve his right. Now this seems to be in contrast with what Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. Jesus said in Matthew 5 38, he says, you have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. In other words, in the Old Testament, God said if somebody knocks your tooth out, you can knock out one of their teeth. The implication was you can't knock out two of their teeth. There needs to be justice, not for the sake of revenge and not for escalating the situation, but for justice. You've heard an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, but I tell you not to resist an evil person. Whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other to him also. If he wants to sue you, take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. Whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and, and from him who wants to borrow, do not turn away. The idea here, if somebody slaps you on the cheek, turn the other cheek also. 
it may seem like some to be in conflict with what the Apostle Paul has just done. They have accused me of things that are not true. Shouldn't I just turn the other cheek and let them get away with it? So shouldn't I just turn the other cheek and, and give up and say, I'm a Christian and I'm ready to die for Jesus? And, and it would seem that according to Jesus' teaching about turning the other cheek, that that's what Paul should have done. But that's not what Paul should have done. The idea of turning the other cheek in Matthew chapter 5, verse 38, that was a euphemism for, for being insulted. To have, it's like you've slapped me in the face. It doesn't actually mean you've slapped me in the face. It means you've insulted me. Jesus is saying here, don't be the kind of person that needs to take revenge about every single thing. If they insult you, take it. If they're forcing you to go one mile like the Roman soldiers would go, would do that, they had the authority to put their sword on your shoulder and compel you, if you were a Jew, to carry their burden for a mile. Jesus said, it's not fair. Go two miles with them. Don't resist those kinds of things. As a matter of fact, for a Christian, if we go the second mile with, with a person, it means we have more time to talk to them about Jesus. We have more time to love them. We have more time to hear their story and to get to know them. So there is a time where we turn the other cheek but there is also a time when we fight using the system. Don't know where any of you are at today. Obviously, I'm just making a video. But those are the kinds of things that you have to work out in faith and walking with the Lord in faith and seeking his will. Paul says in Philippians, he says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, knowing that it's God who works in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. These are the kinds of questions that sometimes I get as a pastor. Pastor Bill, what should I do? Should I turn the other cheek or should I take him to court? Well, if it's another Christian, we should never take another Christian to court. But what about the contractor that charges you too much and doesn't fi finish building your fence? What about those kinds of things? Those are things that sometimes we may have to use the system. What if somebody is suing you wrongfully and is going to take away your business and take away your livelihood and you've done nothing wrong? I would probably counsel someone to use the system to protect yourself, protect yourself, protect your family. What if they write a bad review of you on Yelp? Well, do you go after them on social media? Turn the other cheek. These things require great spiritual maturity for the Christian, and it's a moving target. But both things are presented in Scripture. Use the system to preserve your life. Somebody insults you, turn the other cheek. There's probably a lot of variables in between. You have to work those things out, but we always want to look to God's word for that guidance. So some things to think about. Thanks for watching.